Welcome to vanofaction.com and today we are talking about inverters and an inverter is an optional part of your electrical system. When most folks design their vans, they design them with two separate electrical systems. One is the 12 volt. And a 12 volt system is the same as what you, what's in the van when you get it or your car. It, uh, it powers up the lighter things like your lights in your ceiling, the water pump, the USB port chargers you might use for charging your telephone, the cigar lighters or cigarette lighters you might plug little things into. You generate that power using your solar panels or maybe the DC to DC charger and that energy when it's when it's generated is stored in the batteries in the back of the van. Then when you want lights and you're in the middle of nowhere you just flip the switch and it takes power to the batteries and lights come on. That's great. But there are some things you may want to do in your van that require uh, more electricity than the 12 volt can supply. In those cases you need regular household current. The three prong plugs, the bigger wires, and the regular wall plugs. If you're parked someplace like in your driveway or at a campground that has services available, you can run an extension cord from some other place to your van and power up those plugs. But if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you just can't plug them in and take the energy out of the battery. The 12 volt won't go through those plugs. You have to find a way to invert that energy out of the battery into a, a usable current that you can use in the wall plugs. And that's what an inverter does. I didn't think we were going to have one initially. I didn't think we'd want one, but I'm so glad we put one in. And this is the adventure we had that day when we were doing it. And I started in the summertime. It's a winter time now. It was, it was quite an ordeal. Walk with me. You may pick up some trips on things not to do. I just want to tell you a story about Renergy products. Now, you know on this site, there is no unboxing, there's no, there's no girls in bikinis, and there's no sponsorship. I get paid nothing by anybody. This is not a commercial for Renergy, it's a story. And I chose Renergy products for my, my electrical system because I don't know anything about electricity. And it, it, Renergy had a very good reputation. Uh, they're a little more expensive than some parts, but they had a great reputation. And I thought if all my pieces were made to talk to each other, it would be better for me. So I bought the lithium batteries. I bought the DC to DC MPPTPT controller and the solar panels. And they worked perfectly right out of the box. So when it came time for my inverter, I thought, I'm going to buy Renergy inverter as well. So I waited until they went on sale, and then I ordered my 2,000 watt pure sign inverter. About four days later, I got it in the mail, but I didn't get it in the mail. I went to the post office to get it, but it wasn't my 2,000 watt inverter. It was this great big honking inverter, converter, charge controller, digital readout, all kinds of stuff. It was, it weighed about 90 pounds. It was about five times bigger than what I wanted, and it was about four times more expensive than what I wanted. They would do the job I wanted, but it was just, it was a lot more than I asked for. And so I, I thought, well, I gotta send this back. So I, I went online trying to find a way to call them because I needed mine too. I was working on a time frame for mine, and uh, I couldn't find a phone number. There is no way to reach Renergy by telephone. So I sent them an email and I said, look, you guys, you sent me the wrong part. I, I sent them a copy of my purchase order. I sent them pictures of the packing slip I received and a picture of the box that I got. About a week, maybe 10 days later, I got an email from them saying, oh, so sorry you're having so much trouble. Uh, could you please send us a picture of the packing slip and the item we sent you so we can determine you sent us, we sent you the wrong one. And I thought I already did that, but okay. So I, I sent them off of pictures again and about a week, 10 days later, I got this email saying, so sorry you're having so much trouble. Uh, we've determined we sent you the wrong item and we will be sending you a packing slip and we would ask you to take it back to your post office and mail it back to us, uh, repackage it, mail it back to us, and then we will send you a replacement part, the correct part. And I thought, well, that's okay. I could understand them wanting to know they're going to get it back, you know. I'm sure not everyone would, maybe there's some scams out there. Anyway. Week, 10 days later, I get an email with a packing slip. I and mean, they could have come out immediately, but it took about a week to 10 days. I get an email with a packing slip. I, I, I put it on the package, bundle everything back up again, take it to the post office. It's a half hour drive each way. Put it in, give it to the post office lady. And I said, now I need to have a receipt for this so that I can prove to them that I've put it in the mail. And she said, well, it's prepaid. You don't get a receipt. But it turns out somewhere in that packing slip, there is actually a tracking number. So I, 
I came back to back home and I sent them an email, I waited a day, and then I ran the tracking number through the system and it showed that it was in the post office system. It's been picked up and it was tra it had a delivery date. So I sent them an email and I said, look, you guys, I, I've sent this off in the post office. Here's the tracking number. If you track it, you'll see it's on its way. I have no more control over it. Please send me my, my, my inverter because I'm, it's the summertime. I need the frigging thing. A week, 10 days later, I get this email says, uh, sorry, you're having so much trouble. Thank you for sending it back. We have determined that you received, we did this back in the system. We will make arrangements now to send you your, your you know, replacement part. Okay, great. Sat there and waited and waited and waited. A week, 10 days later, I get an email saying, we have uh, established that we're out of stock and we'll be sending you yours probably in about three or four weeks. We should have stock to send you. And I thought, this is bullshit. So... I went online to their energy site, and if I wanted to buy a 2,000 watt inverter, they had six they could sell me right that day. So I took a picture, a screenshot of that, and I sent them an email and I said, look it, sorry you're having such a hard time, but you've got six of these things on the shelf right now, just give me my money back, and I will, I will, uh, I'll buy a new one. I mean, I don't even give a shit, I just want, I want the freaking thing. I was getting angry, as you can tell. And about oh, four days later, I received uh, the the 2000 watt inverter but it didn't come from energy it came from amazon <coughs> i mean i can't i can't i just didn't make any sense at all so it took almost six weeks to get my six seven weeks to get my my inverter out of energy because their customer service sucks okay products are excellent customer service sucks so it's not my personality to do it, but the next time I order something from Renogy, and I will, I will continue to use Renogy products because they're fantastic products, but if they screw up and send, send me something better than what I asked for, next time I'm keeping my mouth shut. Just want to pass that along for what it's worth. It's a great company for the product they make, a lousy company for customer service. So Mr. Renogy, Mrs. Renogy, if you're watching this video, you know, and you need a little help or a little direction, reach out to me. I got some advice for you. And here we are, friends, in the middle of Mosquito Alley. The bugs are just terrible out here. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this. Just ignore this piece. This is part of the support system I built for the uh, for the the dining tent and my guitar case and the hammock, so that it's up off the off of the bottom of the the basement. So I can still put stuff underneath. And I don't have to unload everything in order to get a little bit out of here. Anyway, this is the space, though, right here. This is the space that I left for an inverter if I wanted one. I wasn't certain I wanted one, but I do. So, this is the Renergy 2000. And it's supposed to fit it right up. Ho, ho! And it's gonna, it's gonna fit. Isn't that great? <laughs> Even the printing's the right way. Isn't that amazing? So, these are the plugs that'll plug into the inverter at this end. And the wire connections are at that end. It's gonna work out just fine. It's gonna be perfect just the way it is. This is good. This is very good. It's really important that these inverters be mounted really securely to the side of the van or the floor, wherever you're going to put it. Just don't stay and I screw it to a piece of plywood with a couple of wood screws. Get some good mechanical fasteners right into a rib of the van because these are heavy. They don't take a lot of abuse. And the last thing you want is for it to fall off if you're on a bumpy road or, God forbid, in an accident. You've got to make sure they're securely fixed to the wall. And when these guys do their magic, they create a lot of heat. So just don't stick it on the side of the wall. Build it off a little bit so you get good air movement all around it. And don't lock it up in a closet someplace unless you make sure there's vents. Because there's a lot of heat created in this process. And if it gets too hot, it stops functioning well to shorten its life. Hmm. Okay, so now it's time to connect the wires. And they come, wires come... Um, like there's two wires. I don't know what they with one terminal on each end. I, I I don't know why that might be, but they're a lot longer than they need to be for me. But I'm not, I'm not comfortable cutting them off, so I'm just gonna just loop them around and and then secure them when I'm finished. Right now, though, I've got to try and get this guy. You put make sure you get your little boot on. Okay. And then I'll as I say I'll find a way to make these look nice and neat. So I ran that black wire off of the black bus bar. It comes up, 
loops around and connects to the black terminal. The red one is going to run from this breaker, this, this fuse, to this terminal. I really need about six inches of cable and I've got all this extra stuff. And again, I'm not comfortable trying to cut it off. So I'm just going to loop it all up and make extra and it'll be what it is. You want these to be protected by the breaker. You don't want to overload the wire ever. So the power comes out of the battery and runs through this breaker and there's no there's no load or anything on it before that. And this way everything's protected. And the 2000 watt si pure sine wave inverter is installed on the wall. It's wired into the batteries. I still have that one breaker open so there's no juice going through it yet. I have it turned off. There's two issues now. It doesn't plug. Look. These yellow plugs are too big. They won't they won't fit on there. There's not enough room for that plug to go in. I have to try and get some smaller male ends. I have to see how long I can do. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but I have to go to the hardware store today and see if I can figure that out. That's number one. The second issue is this is the remote control. And the remote control has to be fished in. I've got a string pulled. Hopefully you can see that string. I had to make a new panel to accommodate this controller that I had to move this plug over. Uh, I didn't show you that because this is just unique to me. The one thing that I'll tell you though is you gotta watch this because this battery monitor, when Red Energy sends it out, it comes with the battery monitor, the shunt at the back end, and the cable that goes between them. And that cable plugs into the back of this monitor and the shunt. This is the remote control for the inverter. It comes with a cable that attaches to the inverter and it's always permanently attached to this guy. It's wired in directly to this guy. So you just can't pull the cable from one end to the other. I had to start at this end and go that way because this guy's too big to get through all the little holes I had to get it to. So I don't know why they do that, it just, they did. And for some reason, this monitor is a friction fit in the hole, nice and neat and tidy. This monitor screws in place. And for some reason, I I lost the screws. So these are two screws that came out of something else Red Energy sent me. And, and there we are, I think that looks good. I've also added my power surge bar to the top so that when we have shore power and I can connect to the shore power, I can plug the power surge bar into that plug and then these will move over. What I'm doing now is I've turned this on. It's on, but there's no drain on it. There's no load on it at all at the moment. What I'm doing is I want to see if it's going to work or not. I want to be close enough that I can throw this breaker or something goes screwy. So I have a drill here. I'm going to plug the drill in. I like to try and test things a couple of different ways. Right now, I know it's hooked up. It's got power because the light's on. I want to try and drain a little energy just to see if it's going to actually function that way. I'm going to try each plug to make sure they're all working. And then we're going to go into the cab and see what the drain on this actually is when I make it work. So here's the drill. That's working. That's working. And that's working. That's excellent. Okay, now I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on to remote. Well, that's really pleasing. Okay, let's try the front end. Now I have the same drill plugged into the wall unit down below. And we're going to crank this puppy up and just see what happens. This should be kind of interesting. Oh, first thing I have to do, this is so exciting. I've plugged them in at the back end into the inverter. And now I'm going to turn the inverter on. And now we're going to turn the drill on. And we should watch this and see what happens.
Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. I think it's something with a, a bigger load. This this little drill probably doesn't draw very much. Doesn't draw very much at all. So this is really exciting. So now, if you if you watched the video on selecting the right battery, this is my heat gun. It's a big draw. Oh, and here we are on low. on 69 amps with six hours left again put on high oh look at this 136 137 amps we have four hours three hours 45 minutes three hours 10 minutes. here's going to calibrate there's a big draw but that's amazing Uh-oh, something just shut down. Wow, and here we go. This is, I'm a little disappointed. This 2000 watt pure sign inverter seems to be functioning exactly as it was designed to function. The issue is right here. The issue is this fuse. Now, in my original design, and the, my layout physically is a little bit different in terms of where things are located, but if you trace the wires on the sketch, you'll find that this is exactly the way it's supposed to go. And this breaker, or this fuse, protects the wires between the battery and the inverter and really there's like it's only a couple of feet apart there's not a lot of wire to worry about but anyway that fuse protects it and in the design it says right on the design this fuse should be sized to whatever your inverter requires because not all inverters obviously require the same size fuse now it turns out a 2000 watt Pure sign inverter requires or should have a 200 amp fuse and my fuse is only a 70 and the reason it's a 70 is the other fuse I bought was a 70 and I thought well I'll just get them both the same because when I was doing this as you recall if you watch the other videos and they'll be linked at the end I wasn't sure I was going to even have an inverter so I left the space there for it but I wasn't sure I was going to use it now what I have to do is I have to upgrade that fuse to a 200 amp fuse just like all 10 minute jobs i try this turned into a much bigger bit of jiggery pokery than i'd expected to expected it to but nothing that couldn't be managed and here it is in place and i'm going to close that up and here we here we are back again this is exactly the same setup as it was before but it has a larger fuse in it i've changed it to remote so let's turn it on remotely now i'm going to plug in the heat gun this is when the first fuse would have blown on us. That's been running for a couple of minutes now. You see it's pulling 134 amps, well below the, the 200 that we have in the fuse. So that, I'm sure that'll run until the battery runs did, which is telling us that's an hour and 29 minutes away. And there you go, it's all done, it's working, it's unbelievable. And this is not something that we thought we would like to have. But having it has opened up so many opportunities for us just to enjoy ourselves. If we're driving through the mountains or across the prairies and you find it someplace that looks really cool, you say, gee, wouldn't it be nice just to sit here and enjoy this space for a little while? Well, we can do that now. And we can have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. We can warm up, maybe we can cook a meal if we want to. We can even have a tank of hot water and have a shower if you wanted to. It's just created such a, a flexible lifestyle for us. I'm really glad we did it. It's not that hard. Hopefully you found this useful. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. Check out the other videos and come on back.